In this video, I'm going to show you what an SSH proxy tunnel is and how to set one up for yourself. This was a confusing topic for me, but I'm hoping with this simple example, it'll help solidify your understanding. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to start out with this, uh, this little diagram that I made kind of to give an overview of what actually an SSH proxy tunnel is. And you'll see basically that you are here, you are local. This is your machine right here, and there is a private inaccessible resource that you want to get to. Uh, it's running on port 80 and we're going to use a proxy server in the middle to uh, basically tunnel, right? There's that term, tunnel that information via the proxy server back to our local host and in our local host we can access it at port 8888 or you know these ports and IP addresses are interchangeable for your use case so uh, that's what the command looks like but let's go ahead step by step and show this how this actually works so um, right here I have uh, a remote server at this IP address it's just showing this page and then it's not private now but um, this is our, our you know quote unquote private server so it's accessible right now but let's go ahead and lock that down what I'm going to do is SSH into each one of these servers um, and then we're going to go ahead and make the restrictions as necessary. So uh, on the right hand side here, the IP address ending in .83 corresponding to this private website. Uh, let's 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 block. There's a couple different ways you can block access, but let's block it from the web server level. So let's go to the ETC nginx sites available directory and then we're going to edit the default configuration file here and this is just set up this has nothing to do uh, with the um, the the tunnel right so uh, I'm just locking it down allow we're only going to allow connections from we're only going to allow connections to this website from this IP address okay so we're going to allow 159.223.180.93 and that matches up with uh, this IP address over here. And then if you're not that IP address, then we're gonna deny you. So that's gonna look, oops, that's gonna look like this. Deny everybody else, deny all. Okay, so to apply those changes, we'll do system CTL restart nginx. And now if we try to go to this website, uh, we're gonna get a 403 forbidden error because I am not that IP address. This is the only uh, person in the whole world. This is the only server in the whole world that can access this website. And let's let's prove that to yourself, or let's prove that to ourselves. So um, we're we're we are on the IP address ending in .dot nine three, the one that's allowed to access that. So if we curl that IP address one five nine dot two two three dot one eight eight dot eight three we'll see that we can successfully, when it loads after the lag, <laughs> we can see that it will uh, load. Okay, and there you go. That took a while, but you'll see that it returns the uh, HTML code associated with that website. So we can still access uh, the private website from this IP address because we explicitly told it to do that. So how can we on our local machine access that website? And we can do that through an SSH proxy tunnel. So let me open up a, a new window here. This is a local window on my local machine. And let's go ahead and write out the SSH proxy tunnel command. And that's going to look something like this. SSH-N, and I'll explain all these flags in a bit. Um, dash L local host colon 8888 colon the IP address uh, of the the private inaccessible resource okay so that's one five oops one five nine dot two two three dot one eight eight dot eight three and then uh, that website um, is being served on port 80 we don't usually type that into the web browser but that's how it works so we'll use port 80 and then root at the proxy server the, the server that has access to that resource so that's in our case 159.223.180.93 okay so let's go ahead and execute that and explain things along the way so basically when we go to localhost colon 8888 in our web browser here on this computer, we're going to see this inaccessible resource to everybody else via the SSH 
proxy tunnel. And this is our proxy server ending in .93. So let's pull up that diagram again. So to match it up, where's our, there it is. So this is our proxy server, okay? That's what's highlighted here. We're, we're logging in via SSH to that proxy server. On our local host, we're gonna go to localhost colon 8888 in a web browser. And then via the SSH tunnel over port 22, we're gonna be served the website that is running on this private inaccessible service, inaccessible server on port 80. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me show you how that looks. So um, let's go over here. We'll open up a new tab, go to localhost colon 8888, and we should see the private server. Thank you to the SSH tunnel, that proxy tunnel, for serving that to us. Okay, so this is the syntax again, localhost, whenever we go to localhost colon 8888, we see whatever is being served at this IP address on this port. And the way we were able to do that is through the proxy tunnel, uh, the proxy server at this IP address. And that's all going through port 22. So if we get out of this, uh, we try to go back to that website, it's not going to work. It only works when we have that connection, that proxy tunnel connection uh, running. So you can see it, it's loading in the background when I did that. Uh, I get out of it, I refresh the page, it's not accessible anymore. Same thing, we can't get to it publicly via the IP address. Um, it doesn't really make sense, but we can't get to it on port 8888 either. None of that's going to work. The only way we can do it is when we have the proxy tunnel running, the SSH proxy tunnel running. Now, let me explain some of these flags. So the end flag, um, as you notice, like when we execute that, it kind of just sits there, it hangs there. That's what the end flag does. If you want it to, for whatever reason, log into the remote server, um, which the remote server SSH root at that IP address, um, if you want it to log into the, the, the command line, the terminal session at that point, you would remove that dash n flag and now you'll see that we are, uh, we have an interactive session here. But at the same time, in the background, uh, the, the tunnel is running so we can still go to localhost colon 8888 and be able to access that remote resource. So it depends on if you need to do some, if you're doing more than just this, this port forwarding, uh, then you can um, specify the dash n flag. Um, other than that, uh, let's get out of here. I, I'm being very explicit about what I'm writing on the command line, but you'll be you'll notice that, uh, or maybe you haven't. A lot of times you can not include this initial local host argument. So right, this is what we're going to go to locally, uh, but that's a lot of the times understood. So this command will actually work just the same. So uh, we're taking basically whatever is being served on port 80 uh, remotely I knew that was going to happen <laughs> we're going to we're going to be uh, we're going to take whatever is being served on port 80 remotely and access it uh, via port 8888 locally so let me just show you that that works so ssh-l we're going to locally go to 8888 type in the ip address 159.223.188.83 colon 80 and then log into that server Oh, geez. Uh, root at that IP address. So it's a little bit of shorthand here, and we're logged in. Um, and that works, right? Exit out. And it doesn't work. So, uh, again, this is what that looks like graphically. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.